A row be looming. Kasatu's general secretary says Treasury's proposal to curtail public service pay while ignoring inefficiencies at most SOEs, state-owned enterprises, is a recipe for labor unrest. The National Treasury publishing a discussion document on an economic strategy for South Africa, and the finance minister, Tito Mbueni, is expected to touch on that in his budget speech come Wednesday. Joining us now, Kasatu General Secretary Becky and Charlie and Charlie, good evening to you and welcome. Before we get to the public service wage bill, very quickly, you've just been watching that report about a possible one percentage point rise in value added tax. How do you, how would you greet that? I think the question of uh, VAT is, has to be a process one way or another. If you remember the last time, they increase it. There was a lot of debate and discussion because you have to weigh the pros and cons in relation to these issues, particularly because any increase on that, because it cuts across, it affects the poor in terms of their take home or in terms of their buying power. So I don't think it will be an easy decision. I don't think even he will have to take to that one without engaging intensively. I mean, not very long time ago, we we're on the vet. And we have a long discussion. I don't think it's going to be. It might be one of the options, but I think it has to be a But process. possibly a little speculative at this point. Let's talk yeah. about the public service wage bill. What are your expectations around an announcement, and why is the government approach, in your opinion, problematic? Firstly, is that uh, the question of wages is a bargaining matter. It has to go to the bargaining council. It has to be a process to enable both parties to weigh in and be able to engage. But when a decision has been taken at the Treasury level to say this is going to be it, and it is, it rendered the collective bargaining at the bargaining council useless. Why people should be negotiating with the relevant minister when, in fact, the person who take a decision is the treasurer. In other words, it changed the question of engagement. Other was the union must go and negotiate with the treasurer before the budget is, is pronounced. Are you worried the process then is going to be bypassed and this could possibly be forced upon you and your members? I think it's going to, if it has that way, I think that's why we said to you, probably are going to have a labor unrest because people are going to go to the negotiation just to be told we are not negotiating. In fact, the decision has been taken. It undermined the collective bargaining. I think the union will resist that one because it will be sending a bad message, not only in the public sector, but even in the private sector, that the board of directors will take a decision and the human resource and other managers will just endorse that kind of a decision. It's not a collective bargaining. Mr. Nchali, Nchali, I'm assuming that you're either in back-channel talks with government uh, or raising this formally with them uh, the closer we get to budget day when you put your argument forward what are they saying to you we, we have not been engaging because we're trying to avoid the same issues that uh, will be undermining the union and we are likely to be accused by many unions that cause to have a secret talks with uh, the ANC because they are closer to the ANC and a deal has been made there's been no engagement the trade unions have told us that uh, Kosatu, this is a matter for the bargaining council. Leave it to us. We'll engage properly in dealing with those issues. But besides, for us, we're raising the number of issues that before you come to, to cut wages or whatever way, workers are regarded to be the weakest link. Every time everybody wants to cut cost, the first thing they just come to their mind is about what about cutting wages for workers? Isn't the simple math, though, as far as public servants are concerned, is that there are simply too many people in public service, the civil service is bloated, and many of those people who sit there are simply not productive enough? We got a, a mixed message from where we are. We got the Minister of the Public Services and said it's not bloated. What is happening, according to his views and others, is that at the top of level of management. I think that's where there are people who might be duplicating some work or people who are not working and et cetera and et cetera. But in the bargaining, uh, bargaining unit where our members are, are the majority of them, there's no, is not bloated. So when you get the different messages from the treasury, just taking a view that it is bloated, but you got the minister who's supposed to be hands on, says no, it's not bloated. It's a question of how the wages are arranged, particularly at the top. What, what do your members bring to the party? How, how, how would civil servants become more efficient and more productive in order to prevent uh, a, a, a diminution of the public sector? I think it's a question of management because workers take instruction in terms of how they, they need to, to work. What we know is that people at the lower rate, they are saying that 
there are 100, I think over 130,000 vacancies. People are doing double jobs. If you look to the at the hospitals in terms of the entry level, if you look at the police, you look at the nurses, you look at the teacher-child ratio, you could conclude that we need more people to be employed in that particular. And I am going to leave it there. Beck and Charlie and Charlie from Kasato, the General Secretary, thank you very much indeed.